So welcome to our Meet the Mentor with Veronica Buck. And I have a little um, information to share about her. Veronica Funk is an award-winning artist who was raised in Manitoba, studied art design at Red Deer College, and is currently working towards her Bachelor of Arts degree in Literature. The focus of her work has become storytelling, honoring the lives and stories of women through portraiture. That's great. Mm -hmm. Veronica also does travel journaling, which is the focus of her course that we're going to be starting a week from today on November 9th and it will go for four Thursdays. Um, so for Valerie, keeping a travel journal um, okay. has become- a complete... Veronica. Veronica, <laughs> holy smokes, how come I have Valerie in there? <laughs> I think my autocorrect was on when I was doing this and it put someone else's name and I'm so embarrassed. No, don't worry uh, about it. V, the V names, it's always of something else. It wants to be, yeah. For mm -hmm. Veronica, keeping a travel journal has become a deeply fulfilling hobby, a passport to reliving adventures and emotions long after the journey ends. It's a way to encapsulate the essence of a place and time. And through this workshop, she'll be sharing her travel journaling techniques with us. Um, today, though, we're going to be doing a demo in acrylics in yep. her travel workshop, journal workshop, she plans to dive into journaling using water media. So Veronica works in both. In her mentorship, I believe that it is mainly acrylics and with the workshop that she will be doing for travel journaling, we'll be using minimal watercolor supplies and she's gonna show us how it can be easy to carry your artistic passions with you on your journeys. Um, so for my mentorship, I used to do predominantly acrylics, but I, it has really shifted to really talking about the business of art, things like how to write a statement, how to get a CV, all that kind of stuff. I, I find those are the things that are always the hardest to, you know, how to get published, how to find places to exhibit your work. So that is the focus of my mentorship classes typically. But I do do some demos and stuff as well. And awesome. Also, well, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. I was just looking at your mentorship page on Mastria. So yeah. um, I that information would be great to know for any artist. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So for today, though, Veronica is going to be doing a demo in acrylics, I believe. You want to yes. tell us a bit yeah. about your demo? So um, I've been painting canoes for many, many years because I grew up in the north, in northern Manitoba. It was a huge part of my education growing up, learning to survive in the wilderness and, and to travel and just to enjoy time on the water. Um, but I do often, um, when, you know, when I'm in, in the mountains or anywhere that there are canoes, I will, I always have a sketchbook with me, whether it's a bit larger, I was going to say, this is the largest one. This one's about five and a half by eight because it's still easy enough to transport. I can still stick it in the bag and take it with me. But um, I'll show you some of the images. But what happens, I do gather information as I'm out, especially canoe shapes. And then I will, you know, fiddle with them a little bit and make them however I feel like making them. But what I use that for, not only is it fun to do it while I'm out and about, but, you know, when we stop in a cafe or just sit at the side of the river or whatever. But I also use that for inspiration for my paintings that I do. So typically I used to always paint large, like 36, 48, you know, and larger, but I developed adhesive capsulitis. So I had to get smaller. And with the smaller, even my sketchbooks started getting smaller. So because it, I need to be able to carry them with me without affecting my shoulders. And so this is my favorite size. Um, what is it? Three and a half by five and a half handbook journal. It's the same company as this one, just in a smaller size. And an they awesome are- size. It is, it fits right into my little pouch when I'm traveling, you know, walking anywhere. And it's great, like I've taken it to San Francisco and out to BC and stuff. And it doesn't get in the way of all the other things I need, you know, passport, wallet, you know, sunglasses, and it all fits in my little pouch and it's not heavy. So that's why, and I can paint on the plane too when I take something small like this, which is very, very nice. But 
I'm going to flip my camera around so I can start talking about some of the supplies I specifically use when I'm painting with acrylics. Okay. Let's see if oh. I can do this. There we go. Okay. So you use a minimal oh, palette? palette all the time. For the first like thousand paintings I did, I just used a primary palette plus white. And it used to be very specific. Cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow medium, and ultramarine blue with titanium white. But the cadmiums, I've been trying to get them out of my repertoire because they do um, soak into your skin, you know, they're toxic colors. Yeah. And then over, over time working with, you know, different mentors myself, I started learning more about all the um, transparent colors. Love transparents because they are so fantastic for uh, layering. So today I've got yellow medium azo. Oh, and I do like the Liquitex. I have double jointed thumbs. So little, little containers are really hard for me to open. So I do prefer the Liquitex. Uh, so azo, uh, yellow medium azo, quinacridone crimson. I also like, like magentas and colors like that. And today I have phthalo blue. So Honestly, I don't even care which primary set they are. They can be uh, Indian yellow, which is more orange or Prussian blue. That's a deeper, more staining blue. Um, but I just love having the three colors because uh, I don't worry about matching. <laughs> oh, Triart has the flip lids. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. That's a good one, too. On there, Canadian. Okay, so um, I have spot lit you now. Okay, Correct. perfect. And if anyone has questions, are you open to people just asking oh, if you're painting? Definitely. Yeah, I prefer it that way. So I just wanted to kind of flip through my sketchbook. So this is what I play in and just gather ideas, try out different palettes and different colors. But you can see, like, not only will I get the an image of a canoe, so these were done in watercolor pencil crayons, because then I just need to bring a water brush, and it's just, and with that, I'll usually take about five colors with me, and again, small enough to throw into my bag. And then I also start collecting ideas for what I could put in the background, because I really like layers of patterns and colors so the background, usually what I'll do is I'll take pictures. Like this is based on a Tom Thompson painting. So I'll usually take pictures. And then when I'm home, I will use micron pens or, you know, in different colors to, to start playing with different patterns. Oh, this is a Benjamin Chi Chi image. He was the first artist I was exposed to, one of the Woodlands artists growing up up north. Love Benjamin Chi Chi's work. Yeah, so I'm just looking at different perspectives. I even, sometimes the, canoes are the color is more accurate to the color of the canoe sometimes I just make up a color because it's fun to just paint whatever you want oh I also add quotes I'll do anything in my sketchbooks well this is Isaac Bignall he was another one of the first artists oh, that I was exposed cool. to yeah especially because you know going out to the Leighton Center I keep running into the bison in the field so I keep taking pictures while I'm out there so it just is just reflective of that this one was done in pen and ink because that's all I had. And then when I got home, I colored it and added more imagery of, around it. So do you use these as your ideas for your bigger paintings? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and just looking at canoes from different perspectives. What's really cool is that canoe making companies in Canada have been sending me pictures too. So it's oh, fun wow. that I can utilize those images too. I'm thinking I might lean towards this one. I love that perspective and how big it is compared to how small, but though I might tilt it a bit to be on this panel. So today I just have a wood panel to use, but I'm just gonna keep that picture aside. And then these are the tools that I really like to use. So, um, stencils, love stencils. I'll cut out pieces of stencils or I will make my own. And this swallow image is an image because we always have, you know, all these birds flying around everywhere. And we've got have families, uh, family with farms and stuff. So always swallows. 
So this is an image that I have drawn and cut out in different sizes. And I keep both the positive and negative shapes because I can go around the edge of this one. I can draw using, you know, uh, Posca pens through it. I can stencil through it by dabbing color through it. So it's neat that you can do a number of things. The other thing that I sometimes do is I will put um, gel media down through the stencil and then I will copper or gold leaf on top of it as oh, well. Wow. Yeah, just to, you get that little reflective. I love that. Palette knife um, and the brayer um, are the two things that I use when I start my layers because I want them thin because the only way to keep your colors vibrant is not doing wet and wet, you know, unless you're using in the same color family. Because if you do, you know, a red with a yellow, you'll get orange suddenly. You won't keep that red and you won't keep that yellow. So I want to make sure my layers are thin enough and dry enough so that it doesn't affect the color on top. So I'm going to start with the yellow. So you work in layers and do glazing? Do totally. you some glazing, some, um, if I want, uh, uh, you know, opaque colors, especially because I'm right now using these more transparent colors. If I want it opaque, then I will um, just add some white. Or if I have a tube of opaque color, I can mix two colors together. Like if I have a blue and another blue, you just get, end up with different colors, which I really like. And honestly, um, say I was making a green out of the yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. I um, just adding a, just a little bit of white doesn't really ch change the tone too much, but it does make it okay. So, and you can. And are you using the palette knife to get the texture? Is that what you're hoping for? Is texture there? Not as much texture as just to get color on my palette on my panel real quick, on my surface because. Um, that was the most intimidating for me when I was starting out back in the 80s was facing the blank canvas. So I started by painting interiors and I'm just going to wipe this down a bit and make sure that it's not going to affect the next layer. Um, so I started by painting my <laughs> canvases uh, lime green because I was thinking of a green screen and then painting over top of that. And the uh, images would just pop against that green background. But it, so what I did is I did the green, lime green, then I did the drawing in charcoal, and then I uh, would paint the items, the interiors, like this furniture is what I was painting. Okay. Yeah. And I just liked that there was something on the surface to begin with. So, um, and this is another reason I use the brayer. I like the marks it makes, but it's also a great way to get a lot of color on your surface really, really fast. Do you ever incorporate collage as well? Um, I don't. I that's why I use the stencils, though. I'm just I, I'm just not a collage person. I have tried it many, many times. I. I just have fun just with layers and layers of paint. And and you just get all these interesting things that, that it's just neat because I, I like it not perfect, not like collage is ever perfect, but I really like things to be uh, very random, I guess. And I love the idea of repeating patterns and colors. So I'm just using the, see that. Yeah, using the blue just to stencil through. Just I've got this old ratty brush, so I'm not worried about wrecking it. And did you have this just already? Is that a Stay Wet palette that you're just using that you had yeah. already set up? Yeah, it's a small one. As you can see, it's very messy. I just keep going and going and going with my colors until I need to change out the palette paper, which can be a month or more. Oh, wow. And what I love about that is suddenly there are mixtures happening on the palette that um they just happen randomly because and because you're using the same colors you'll always have the mother color in there yeah always yeah so you can see i've got the four colors the i usually i try to put the yellow and red on the one side and the blue and white on the other 
but you know, once I start painting, cause there used to be yellow in that corner, I just start, you know, not thinking about what I'm doing. It's just, like I said, it's all very, very random. I guess random to a certain extent, but you know, when you've done something a long time, you just do it intuitively. Yeah. Whereas in the beginning, you have to think it through more carefully. So was your design with these ones today, with these um, ones that you're using right now, was that planned or was it random when you pulled them out? Just random. Yeah. I don't like to think too much at this point in the process because I, I, like I said, I used to get so intimidated when I started. In fact, I used to have use spray paint, which absolutely loved, but I felt really bad about all those cans. Mm. I know they're supposed to be recycled, the spray cans, but I just didn't feel good about it. And then I had an airbrush, but then my husband developed sensitivities to acrylics and I'm in the house. So right now I have a window open and I will put the air <laughs> purifier on before it comes in. So yeah, this is how random I do it. I don't like to waste any paint. I turn around my stencils, try to use as much as I've got on the brush and it does, I don't need to use the whole stencil. I can just use part of it. Nice. And, and you're not doing that very thickly as you're going through, you're just tapping through it. Yeah. Yeah. This process for me often takes a long time because I'm doing probably a dozen layers. So I do have a swap out so we don't have to watch okay. me do that. <laughs> so you do about a dozen layers on your background, you mean, before you yeah. do your new Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because wow. then there's this depth and there are things that as you keep looking, you start seeing things that you don't don't notice right away in the beginning. And the other thing is because my canoe is more centered, I got I always have to remember to make sure to have patterns and colors in the middle of my surface as well. So the other thing I use, and you know, this is something that, <laughs> They tell you you should wear gloves, not, but I do use my fingers and I do use um, my hands. Sometimes when I do the really large ones, like the six foot paintings, I'll put handprints on. Yeah, I use paint with my fingers with the paint a lot too, but I guess that you're not supposed to with the cadmium. No. So. Yeah, I don't use the cadmiums, but anything, you're really not supposed to have paint. on. It's still plastics, right? It's yeah not good for you. Do you use the um, sort of uh, liquid gloves or anything on your hands? To no, I do put lotion on my hands before and no. I do um, wash my hands when I'm done. So the big thing is I'm wanting to put lots of patterns. And this is all just intuitive. Yeah, yeah. And when you're doing it, are you thinking thirds? Are you thinking doing three of this or anything like that? Um, sometimes. Actually, I do count often as I'm going, but then I forget my count and stop paying attention, you know, especially when I get into bigger numbers. So a lot of it is just about repeating things here and there, because you can have one in each section as long as you're repeating them around. And if you have like, 12 marks, people aren't going to notice if you, you know, that it's 12 no. or 11 or 10 or, you know, the lot more marks you have. But yeah, I just want your eye to keep, well, to keep moving around the surface all the time. So yeah, circles, lines, dots. When you were doing your stenciling, were you considering the composition that way too? So I ha I see that you have the one side pointed in towards the center, one pointed from the bottom up. Was that intuitive no. or on purpose? They just, I just make sure there's patterns going around and that there's pattern on the inside as well as okay. the outside edges. Cause I'm never sure which direction the canvas or the surface is going to be until okay. I go to paint. And often 
once I've decided the shape and size of my canoe, that's when I start um, looking at my surface and seeing which way I want it to be facing. Let's see. I should have brought my Posca pens with me. I didn't think to bring them. No, oh, I love, I love paint pens. They're just so fast and easy, you know? Okay, and the other thing I really like to do is to, this is the uh, Liquitex Freestyle brush. I used to have a bigger one because I worked on big canvases, but this one, it it's such a small bristles, but it really holds a lot of liquid. And what I like to do is drip paint as well down my surface. Are you using water when you're dripping? Um, yes. And you're I not worried about the uh, water sort of affecting the binder or anything? Um, so I do have a um, flow aid medium in my water. So I do a few drops of the Floyd medium, like it tells you on the container how many drops for the amount of water. So I won't lose the integrity of the paint. It'll still, okay. yeah, it's a, it's called Liquitex Floyd medium. I don't even know where I put the bottle. I got this ready this morning and I set it down somewhere, but yeah, that is, you're right. It You do have to consider the integrity all the time. I mean, I use a spray bottle sometimes and I wonder if I'm using too much water and if it's going to affect how long it'll last and things like that. So I didn't know that you could put Floate in it. Yeah, there are several different media that you can use in your uh, water or in, you know, when you mix your paint. Can you think of the others at the moment? But there are several available on the market. So yeah, I just started mixing them right in my water because that really I find oh see I'm liking this already and you know what's <laughs> yeah I just find that easiest and I don't have to think about the ratio and everything once it's mixed in then I'm good so um yeah sometimes I will like it and dislike it and like it and dislike it lots of times because I go back and forth brayer palette knife, brushes, fingers, like everything until I get something I like. So this is really wet. So I'm going to put it aside because I will go back into this some more, although it's looking pretty interesting already. But yeah, I will go back into it some more once it's dry. And this is the one that I made over a couple of days. Okay, so do you work on more than one at a time usually? Oh yeah, I'm usually working on like anywhere between between 10 and 50 all at once. So Oh wow. Yeah, but and I never know what I'm going to paint on them, like especially when I do my portrait series. As I'm working on them, I constantly think about who the person is that I'll be painting maybe favorite colors, maybe their job. If they're like a writer, I will incorporate words or letters into the background. My daughter sews, so I put like a measuring tape pattern in the background. Um, one of the ladies from my woman's work project, uh, she makes lace, so I uh, spray paint or not spray. Oh yeah, I guess at that point I did because I did it in the garage, spray painted through lace to wow. add that to hers. So I'm always thinking about, so I, the beginning is very intuitive. And then as I get further along, I start really thinking about who the person is, or like in this case, this canoe, this one I drew um, in Canmore, cause there's this canoe that's like a sculptural piece by the river. I don't remember where we stumbled upon it. We were just going for a walk along the river anyway. And there's this plaque there but there's this red canoe I did add the lacing to the front because that reminds me of you know my northern childhood and I drew a bunch of flowers in the background because I know they're not sunflowers there but there were a whole bunch of wildflowers there so I'd taken a picture of a bunch of the wildflowers and then I just drew them on in the 
and I really like this look and I'm thinking at some point I need to do something like this on a painting. Yeah, it's beautiful. But so now I've got to decide where, so you're thinking composition. And this is one thing I've always absolutely loved composition. Even if I make something too small or if it's totally centered, you can, depending on what you do around your subject, you can make it interesting still. It's a little harder. So it's easier if you plan your composition right at the beginning. I want to make this a little bigger. I think I'm just going to draw it with a pasta. I usually use white paint and uh, and a, a brush, but this is where I'm starting to think, where do I want this to sit on here? I like this kind of up here, so I'd love that to keep showing, but so maybe, and so I'm always comparing when I'm looking at things. How big is this compared to this? Where does this sit in comparison to the top of my canoe yeah. here? It's it, And you know what? And because the shape is longer and a little bit different, I might change, like either elongate the canoe, flip it a little bit. I'm never worried about it being perfect. I really like things a little bit imperfect. But here, does this come straight down? No, it doesn't. It comes out just a smidge. Do I want that or do I want it to come straight down? So... I think I'm going to put it here. The nice thing is, too, I do have a little spray bottle, just a tiny little mister. And if I'm not happy with my composition, I if I do it pretty quick, I can spray this, you know, the paint and wipe it off and start again. And that's the other thing. Letting this base dry at least a day or two makes sure that it, it adheres really well so I'm not rubbing out any paint if I'm okay. okay. I think I'll do this. Do I want I'm afraid to talk because I don't want to throw you off when you're thinking. I would be thinking so hard. You can, you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I would be concentrating so deeply. I think I would probably use chalk. I don't, uh, I don't, not confident enough for. Well, you know what I like about this? Drawing, I got into art school back in the 80s for my drawing. I was okay. really, really, really intimidated by paint. So, I learned very early on that the more lines you have and everything, the more interesting your drawings are. So I don't mind if there's, if it's all choppy or, and I'm gonna be painting it in and around this too. So it'll change a little bit. Look, I think that looks pretty good. And so at this point, this is when I decide which brush I'm going to use. I'll probably just go back with the brush, the larger brush I had. And oh, yeah, these are my absolute favorite brushes. They're very inexpensive. They're what are they? Royal and Lang Nickel. What I love about them living in Alberta, you know, our climate's so dry. These ferrules never break off of the brush, whereas oh, wow. a wooden handle always does. And I do prefer a shorter handle just because I like a little more control when I'm working. Now I've got to decide what I'm going to... I start cutting in around the shape to highlight the shape. Oh, I didn't realize. So I got those three, three circles in there, which I really like. And a lot of the symbols too that I get are can be from, you know, like... Uh, petroglyphs, um, I, the Okotoks erratic. There are really neat markings that show, you know, okay, our tribe took this many moons to travel past and oh. stuff. And I just love that imagery or that idea. So you're telling your story in your canoe as well. Yeah, yeah.
So you're simplifying out around it just to set your shape up. Yeah. And these colors might stay the same, they might change. And I again, with this, I also keep going back and forth numerous times, adding patterns back in, taking patterns out. So if you had something like those three circles that you say you really liked, it's easy to redo your patterns if you know what they were. Yeah, well, even if, if sometimes you know you have to lose things that you really like in order to get something better. So sometimes it's okay if I lose those, but I get something different. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you're playing the purple against the yellow there. So. Mm hmm your complimentary. I'm going to go with some of this really dark blue. Are you just using straight paint now? Yeah. Yeah. Then the other one. How we just so little, it already like, starts to popping, hey? Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I like using white often to draw with because I use so many colors on the underpainting but you know sometimes it's fun having the colors and I often will go around and add more colors in the outline as well Now, one of the reasons I really, really like wearing, working with transparents is that even if you paint over top, like if you have an added white, over top of something that was already here, um, you can see stuff underneath it, which looks very, which I think looks really interesting. Yeah, you still have the depth of it, don't you? Yeah. You can still see yeah. some of the shapes and things, but it's just deeper back. Yeah, and... And I think, so that, that thanks to Audrey, maybe she was one of my earlier mentors in Calgary. And uh, she was the one who suggested I start working with transparent colors and it just changed everything for me. Plus it's fun, <laughs> you know, adding new colors to your repertoire. Okay, so I'm working on a wood panel and even though I've gessoed the panel and everything, it still accepts the paint differently than if I was working, say on, you know, on the, on a canvas. So I tend to prefer a canvas because it'll grab your color and it like distributes the color a little differently. Whereas I find wood kind of, it's kind of soaks in a little bit more, no matter how many, Coats of gesso and paint I have underneath. So may I ask why you decided to use a panel this time then? I just had two panels. <laughs> okay. <no. laughs> and you know, sometimes it, it actually is good to keep challenging myself to use something that I'm not, you know, totally comfortable or familiar with. I think that's not a bad thing to force yourself to try something different. Yeah. So in the course for the travel journaling, what are you thinking of um, as we're doing it? Um, well, I want to that? share the different ways of travel journaling because there's so many different ways. I've got some great books by different artists and I've tried them all just to see what works for me. But so I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the different things that I journal about, how I go about journaling in public, because I know yeah. painting in public used to intimidate me so much, but it doesn't anymore at all. So that's a big thing for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think for most people. And what, what I find interesting, most people are fascinated by seeing somebody at work. And you know what, and it often, it'll give them the, um, 
like sometimes they become braver and will try it themselves when they've seen somebody else do it. So what I'm doing now here is just highlighting, like outlining kind of shadows. I like keeping the center of my canoe still visible because I love all those patterns, though that I might go over with a glaze to make the whole canoe more red, but I like to start with shadow edges. I might go in with blue or might mix a purple to do this as well. Because it suddenly starts giving it some shape when you have, you know, your dark edges versus your highlight on the inside. And rags. I love my husband's old t-shirts. They make the best rags. Okay. Um, the other thing is I the colors that I like to use too are highly staining colors. So even if I wipe it back, you'll still get a tint of those colors underneath. Yeah, it's really coming together just with that little bit, eh? As soon as you start, you know, pushing it contrast, right? Your darks and lights, your... Um, even contrasting colors, like when you use complementary colors. I'm a huge fan of complementary colors. I love complementary colors. And because I'm using transparent, a lot of transparent colors in my work, um, whatever you have underneath will affect, you know, the colors that you add on top, mm -hmm. which I think is really beautiful. But you know enough about color theory to not make it mud. The big one is like using a limited palette helps and making sure you're not making sure to let colors dry in between that those are the two biggest ones do you take your travel journal art uh, sort of pieces back to your studio and try and make paintings from them do you take photographs and things as well um yeah i do in fact like one of the uh, you know, I posted the mountain one that I had done lot, or that I've been working on last week, and it ended up being a 36 by 36 inch painting. I can actually show oh, wow. you that too, but yeah, I'm going to go in and start. It's still pretty wet. I think those Poscas are more opaque, right? They are, yeah. Side is still pretty wet. Veronica, do you find that Posca kind of comes across a little bit chalky looking sometimes? Yes, it can. And that's where I, the glazing, like the transparent or translucent, whatever paints are really nice. Because once it dries, I can go over with a uh, glaze of color and then it just, you know, brightens it up a little bit, I think. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And it can be the same color that you're glazing on top with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, so if I use maybe say I use a pink Posca, then I can go back over with my like transparent red or magenta or whatever. And then it just pops that color a little bit, kind of tones it down, but it also pops it at the same time, you know? Because it still has some opacity to it. It does, yeah, it sure does. And, and the some, opaques pop more. Yes, yeah. And sometimes I just like to, um, the reason I have these Poscas actually are just, 
like this specific palette of Posca's is just because they were on sale at Michael. Okay. Now, and they were in the sale bin. One was gone. So I got them for so cheap. But, but they're such great colors because this is the color palette I really like to use, you know. A little more. Actually, they're a little more pastel-y than I typically use, but they're they're fun colors. I'm going to put a bunch of these little dots and then I'll let it dry a bit and we'll go over with a little bit more of this red. Actually, maybe I'll go over and add some more of this too. Yeah. So this is the funny thing. I just keep going and going and going until uh, what I was reading. Oh, I think his name is Paul Rubin. It's something creative, something book. It's a new one that's been like everybody's been talking about lately. And he talks about when is a painting done? When you decide it's done, you know? <laughs> and I love that. And you know what? I think a big thing is I've stopped being so intimidated by screwing about screwing things up. It's like, oh, well, then I've learned something. But even that, the more layers and the more colors, I just find it gets more and more interesting as you go. About a few more seconds to draw it. Well, yeah, there's a lot of interest in there, that's for sure. How did you develop your style? Oh my gosh. Um, funnily enough, reading lots of uh, mixed media books. And I didn't do the mixed media part so much. I, I do it in my altered books, but not hugely. Um, but just looking at things and thinking, oh, I could probably do that with paint, you know? So I'm just constantly experimenting and trying. And that's, again, where keeping a sketchbook is so good. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know? In fact, that's where you learn a lot when you just try things out and play. Actually, that book on creativity that I had been reading, he talks about that too. Like you're only going to figure things out by trying them, right? Over and over and over again. So I'll pop, punch some of those back, leave some of them a little brighter. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting the way that uh, leaf is going through the front of the canoe there. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Some of those things are purely accidental and I'm okay with that. In fact, that's what makes it really, really fun. Okay. I think I need to let that area dry a little more because it's pretty wet. And I think I'm going to go in with a little white. This is one thing. When I was in college, we were not allowed to use straight white paint. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. First of all, we were not allowed to use any, any black and no straight white. And we weren't supposed to rely on white for anything. Like our shadows were supposed to be um, mixtures of blue and red. You know, we had to mix our own browns as well. So that's where my, you know, limited palette comes from. But let me tell you, I'm really happy to use a limited palette. And then it's fun if I just change a color out or. Do you use black now? Um, no, I don't. No. <laughs> I so do that was thinking... something you stuck with. You just. Uh, yeah, the I've, white. I've, I've tried it and I've used Payne's Gray in the past. It's okay. I prefer not to use it at all. Because what my professor told us then is black just sucks light, right? So it takes everything from your painting instead of adding. So I focus more on having uh, contrasting colors, you know, dark colors versus light colors. And honestly, I don't even care which colors those are, just as long as there's dark versus light. Okay. 
Sorry, my, my dog's whining here. <laughs> At least it's not my cat <laughs> today. It's looking beautiful. Thank you. Well, this might not have been a good idea, but maybe it'll be okay. Yeah, the other thing I like to do is scrape into wet paint. And then especially if you put it on top of kind of damp paint, it'll lift that. Then you'll see colors from underneath as well. I do also have an, a heat gun, but I rarely use it. Instead, what I tend to do is work back and forth so that I don't have to yeah. think about that. I find paint reacts, especially acrylics, react differently with a heat gun versus, you know, just drying naturally. Do they? What do you find happens? Um, They kind of get gummy, you know? Maybe over time that changes, but... I don't like that feeling. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because um, Golden years ago sent me a pack of Golden Open paints. Yeah. And I thought I would like them for painting outside. I, I found them too sticky. So I didn't enjoy them at all. But yet with watercolors, I've been, it took a bit, but I, I've been loving the M. Graham watercolors and they are very sticky, but I really like them because they just wet up so fast. So when I'm out and about, I don't have to try to take forever to reactivate them. I can just start painting immediately. Do you do plein air? I do, yes. It's, it's mostly, you know, that travel journal stuff. That's Okay, so you don't do plein air with your acrylics? No, actually, you know, it's funny. I did for a while, but I actually prefer plein air with watercolor. So I do have, I sell some of my plein air paintings um, through Blue Rock Gallery and Black Diamond. Mm -hmm. They're just small ones and they're a lot of fun. Okay, pardon me. Is that where you are down there? I'm in Airdrie. Oh, okay. That's still sticky. See, with, um, with the open, there's no way I could do this without, you know, having to wait forever for it to dry in between. Yeah. I haven't tried the opens to see how long they stay wet. Anna uses them for her mixed media for printmaking, jelly print. Mm -hmm. And they, they look fantastic. Like they're, it's nice that they're a little... Are you a plein air painter? I am not um, because I'm still don't like to be seen painting out in public. I'm not. There's lots of places you people. can go that nobody will even see you. <laughs> and uh, my dog is not that patient when I do go to places yeah. where I would like to. So I, I tend to go and sort of take some pictures and things. But that's yeah. where I thought the journaling would be. Yes, it's great. really handy. If I get, if I can get a quick, you know, sketch mm -hmm. and stuff down and do something that doesn't take me a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, maybe I'll be able to put it into a better picture later. Although I'd love to try. <laughs> yeah. What's nice about plein air is like, uh, again, because I have a limited palette, it's easy for me to just get up and go do it. You know, I like to have everything ready. If it takes too long to get ready or to set up, I won't do it. That's what I find with travel journaling. I tried so many different things. I tried a bigger palette. I tried, you know, I brought a travel brush and all of that. And I, if I have to bring, a, like, fill a water dish, I'm not going to do it. Like, I have to make it as simple as possible for me. Well, I just received the Joan of Arc. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I love her kits. Those are fantastic. Um, Irene is asking if the recording is going to be available. Yes, 
It is going to be available, Irene, on the Mastrius YouTube channel. I'm not quite sure when it's going to be posted. Um, you missed the beginning and what um, Veronica had done was she had started working on another background and showing us how she got it going. And then she brought this one out to keep painting on because the other part was wet. So I guess, Veronica, you're going to use the other um, I will. background to do something else. Mm -hmm. I sure will. Because I love these backgrounds. I paint all sorts of things on these backgrounds. The background is the most fun part <laughs> for me to do, I think. There's no judgment. It just You just do whatever you feel like doing, which is fabulous. My favorite. Yeah, no, I used to do a lot of them, um, and I have a lot of sort of abstract backgrounds, and I haven't sort of figured out what to do with them. I love this. Um, I love that you're using the stencils and things and the ones that you cut out too that'll be mm -hmm. really something I can think about when I get back to my ones at home okay so now I'm thinking and this is kind of nice having it on a camera because then I can look at it differently yeah it feels like everything feels a little like this doesn't feel bright enough I think I'm going to wipe some of this this is really really wet this cloth so wipe some of this out so you still have the shadow on the yeah. edges, but then it'll pop out against that, against the background a little more. So this is now two where I have to decide, do I want to get rid of more of the background? Hmm. Oh, I'm not sure. This is why it's nice to work on multiple things at the same time, because then you put one away and come back to it after you've worked on something else, or you get these aha moments when you when so you work you would on. watch you would put this and just look at it for a bit and let it talk to you. Yes. Yeah. Well, you have about eight minutes left. Do you have anything you want people to know while you're thinking about what's going here, about your mentorship, about your course? Um, I'm just wondering if I have, I'm just going to see, nope, that's not it, my mountain book, and then I can show you what I painted on oh, San Francisco. <laughs> there are more sketchbooks here than I realized. Okay. It's fun doing a lot of different things, but it can be confusing because I'm doing a lot of different things. But Veronica, how would you describe mm -hmm. your, how would you describe your art to someone? Oh my gosh, that is such a hard one. Um, I'm really, really influenced by graffiti. That is a big thing, and obviously, I'm influenced by my childhood you know growing up in the north but um yeah i i use a lot of symbols and imagery lots of pattern and color and i at the same time i like a very very simple basic um oops, sorry uh image like i like one face or one canoe or you know one heart or so this is the, uh, I don't know, I can't find the sketchbook that I did the mountains in, but this is the painting that came out of the sketch. The three sisters? Yeah. So if you can see, if you watch on my Instagram, that video of the, um, so you can kind of see it's coming together. There's the drawing and there's the painting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, probably good to let it dry a little bit. But yeah, I don't know where that sketchbook is. But um, probably in my bag. <laughs> so I always have one with me to, to carry around. But um, yeah. And then well, how would you describe my work? Well, yeah. So I'm in a group right now where we're like learning about whimsical art and like 
having names to describe it. So just maybe think like, like what, how would Veronica describe her art? But yeah, I like that you said graffiti and that it represents your childhood. Um, I think that's a great way. Well, to- you know, the big thing is I focus on the things that matter to me, right? So oh, actually here's another one where it was a body of work called um, uh, Fashion Plates. My daughter was in fashion school. So she was sewing things and then I was, I, I used the photos I took of her to paint them. And this was all about, cause I was accepted into fashion school in Toronto back in the eighties, but I ended up, you know, stopping in Manitoba and marrying my husband instead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, life happens. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, I, I I love well. A uh, New York art critic once called said my work resembled a palimpsest, and what that is is like early Egyptian papyrus. They would write, and then they would you know like put paint over it or whatever because they didn't have tons of paper, so they would just reuse what they had and write over top of that, and then kind of wipe it and paint over and do that again, and they would turn it sideways in all different ways so that they were reusing a different are reusing the same material and I love that as a person who really worries about the environment and stuff or <laughs> and everything so um what, that an art critic first of all looked at my work in New York was really cool but hearing that he called it said that it was like a glimpses because that's what I always think about it. it's about layers it's the symbols and images and colors all mean something whether it's to me or about a person, right? It's still to me, I guess, but maybe to that person if I'm painting somebody. So, yeah. You're I telling like the that story. story through the imagery that yeah, you include. For sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like those layers. And, you know, history is all about layers. So I want to work on a series of portraits of women. You know, I was given, I, I found, oh, I don't have it here either. All these little vintage portraits of women from like the 1800s out east, and so I want to use them as inspiration for a body of work too. And I, I'm thinking I'm going to take those black and white images and turn them into color, but we'll see how that works. But I would love feedback to let me know what do you think I need to do on this. That would be nice to hear from other people because I'm always doing this on my own alone in my studio. <laughs> But I still think that there's not enough contrast between the two, the background and the foreground. It, I one thing that I think might help is like the the canoe looks like it's floating through the sky. So if you like, if you had some marks to ground it somewhere. Oh, you know what I might do? I might put it really, really dark blue and let it drip underneath. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Yeah. I love like dark here, so I think that's what I need. Add more dark here. You're yeah. right. Because you said, I mean, I always have a tendency to overwork things. So I like that you said you work on multiples at uh, yeah. the time. Is there any other strategies that you use to just stop yourself from wrecking okay. a good <laughs> or well, Sometimes get it- you need to turn it backwards and not look at it for a while. Or in college, we learned to look in a mirror. And now we've got our phones you can take a picture and flip it to black and white and see if you've got enough contrast that it's popping or not you know so um looking at it upside down is another way just to check your composition as well that's the other thing I want to make sure that your eye floats through even this one behind me I painted this a year or so ago for my husband and um it's still something doesn't feel quite right I love it. Like there, I like the shape of it and everything, but I think I need (laughs) more patterns around it or something. I don't know. I haven't quite decided on that one yet. (laughs) Well, the one that you just had, that you just had up there, I love the little pops of teal against the pink. And um, I kind of think that even just a little more of that color, just because I love, you know, and, I, and again, yeah. they're complementary, aren't they? They are. You know what? I think I'm going to darken and drip down here. I will add teal in around. Oh, you're right. And I'll post it on Instagram once I'm done, probably in a Excellent. day. So. Love to yeah. see it. We are just at the end of the hour. Does anyone Perfect. have any more questions? Well, this is exciting. I'm going to be working with Veronica and we start our 
water um, color or sorry, our travel journaling yeah. next week on Thursday the 9th. It's going to be for four Thursdays, two hours uh, in the mornings. day in the mornings. And she also has her mentorship group. And thank you everyone for coming and supporting us. And if you have any questions, of course, you can go to Mastery Us and we will help you in any way we can. And Veronica, thank you, thank you very much. And I apologize for messing <laughs> your name. <laughs> you can just call me Diane. <laughs> That's not a problem. It happens. I don't know what it is about V names. It happens all the time. Well, it was it was great working with you here. And uh, now I want to go and play with some of my art Perfect. supplies, unpack them, and I've really been putting it off. So thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And yeah. Irene, now you can watch the rest of it when it's posted in a few days on Facebook or on Facebook. Oh, on I'm having trouble here, obviously, <laughs> on YouTube on the Masteries channel. Yeah, thank you very okay. much. Have a great Thanks. day. You too. Bye.